So who's got your money is one of those questions I learned from Grant Cardone. And it's important for syndicators. It's important for real estate investors, real estate agents, or any business owner. You have to understand yeah. who has the desire to hand money over to you. The only reason we ever receive money is because somebody's got a burning hole in their pocket. They've got yes. money burning a hole in their pocket and they need to get it into something else. Please start my money. Hey guys, we're going to talk about that today between Bo and Brother Gwalter, my co-hosts actually, Vinny and Bo show, Bo is here and also Gwalter from Abundance Mindset. Who's got our money, Gwalter? Tell us, brother. So who's got your money is one of those questions I learned from Grant Cardone. And it's important for syndicators. It's important for real estate investors, real estate agents, or any business owner. You have to understand yeah. who has the desire to hand money over to you. The only reason we ever receive money is because somebody's got a burning hole in their pocket. They've got yes. money burning a hole in their pocket, and they need to get it into something else. Uh, so pain, pain is usually the, the source of that. So as capital raisers, as syndicators, you're looking to find a person with too much money on their hands. There's uh, five mm -hmm. different types of investors that we look at. There's a small investor, they invest 50,000. There's the mid investor who invests 100,000. You've got the large investor, they put in a quarter million. And then you've got what we call the family office. They put in about 5 million at their, their traditional amounts. And then you've got hedge funds. They start somewhere around 100 million uh, to yep. a quarter million. Uh, quarter of a billion dollars, so $250 million is what they start investing mm -hmm. with. Um, most people will just say, okay, there's no point in me ever uh, talking to family offices or no point in me ever talking to hedge funds. And that's actually kind of the mistake, not kind of, it's absolutely a mistake for most investors. Because if you're looking to raise a million dollars, right? If you're looking to raise just one million, actually, I have a chart here. It's uh, $1.5 million. If you're looking to raise that amount for $50,000, you're talking about having to talk to 29 people that not yeah. to talk to commit get commits commit. and then 50% yeah. of your commits will actually become actual capital raised. So you're talking to something close to a hundred people, 200 people in order to get 29 people to actually invest with you that 1.5 million. Or as you start with a large investor, somebody who's putting in, let's call it a quarter million or 1 million, like, like you Vinny, your minimum amount mm -hmm. is a quarter million. That means six investors can raise $1.5 million together. Yeah. And then yeah. if you start shifting into, and we have these relationships, we have family offices, their, their minimum investment is $5 million. They'll look at that investment and say, why don't we just do the whole thing in cash? There's no reason in financing. Let's just buy this $5 million property together, cash. And that becomes leverage in your life. Like, what would you do if you weren't calling 200 people in a month? You'd probably go and enjoy yourself a little more, spend time with your kids and your family. So and are they, do they exist? Yes, of course they exist. I have a lot of family offices in my phone book who used to be my lenders because they were hard money lenders also, right? They're hard money lenders yeah. letting me money. And then later on, I realized these guys and gals have a bunch of money that they don't, they don't just want 12%. They don't just want uh, two points. They actually would like to get equity in some of my deals. I just wasn't offering it. Um, so this idea of who has your money is, um, is beyond capital raising, right? If you're looking to sell houses, for instance, every mm -hmm. realtor knows yet you got to get them pre-approved. Right. They got You got to get them pre-approved. Otherwise, you're going to be out there putting in offers and then the other realtors are going to say, are they pre-approved? And then you're not going to be able to close and everybody's going to be upset. And that mm -hmm. including you because you're not getting paid. So the, the magic of finding your own avatar comes down to asking a couple of questions. There's three questions you have to ask. One, do they have the money? Do they have the money yeah. to be able to do this? Mm -hmm. and, and do they have the money is actually a two part question. Do they have access to the money? Because sometimes you, know, yeah. you get the most broke people going and doing these really expensive surgeries because they have amazing insurance. So you mm -hmm. don't necessarily need to have $60,000 in your pocket to go and have you know, cancer removed from your body because you have access to money, so insurance. And in the real estate space, we know that lenders give you money to buy real estate. We know that the mortgage companies, the mortgage brokers will give somebody money to, to invest in a home, right? Something that they could uh, leverage. So a person who has a $5,000 down payment can suddenly buy themselves a $100,000 house because all they need is 5% down. Or a, mm -hmm. a person who has $50,000 can buy a million dollar property because that's you know the leverage of owner occupied properties. And that's access, right? So a person who has a 50,000 may just buy a $50,000 stock and get a yep. significantly lesser return because they haven't gotten access to a huge asset like a piece of real estate, right? You know, if a million dollar property goes up 5%, you've made $50,000. If mm -hmm. a $50,000 property, a $50,000 equity goes up 5%, you've made $250. So you start realizing like this doesn't matter anymore. I need leverage. I need access to access to capital, not necessarily my own capital. So step one for finding who has your money is you have to ask, do they have access to capital? Or do they have capital? Step mm -hmm. number two, that, that's that bleeding neck. Do they have a burning desire mm -hmm. to exchange the capital they either have or have access to 
in exchange for the thing, the product service or the investment that I'm going to deliver on. If they don't have mm -hmm. a burning desire, the third question is, can I create it? Can I create mm -hmm. or identify in their minds that burning desire? Many people don't know they're losing money until you start telling them inflation is 8%. And over the last five years, you've lost 40% on that cash you've been sitting on the bank. Suddenly, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, my $100,000 who could have bought me $100,000 in investments four years ago is now over five years old, is only now buying me $60,000 of investments, which means I'm so getting 40% less cash flow than I would have, 40% less return on investment than I would have. And it becomes really depressing for a person. And, if, if they, and they're not paying attention to this. They never think about the money in their bank account. So the third thing is, can I create an awareness so that they now have that burning desire to exchange services or funds with me? So step one Love is, it. do they have access to capital? Step two is, do they have a burning desire to exchange it for something that you're capable of? And step three is, can that inspiration be installed? Can you inspire them uh, to be installed? I love, uh, I love it. I love it. Such a, such a them, great right? analogy. I know we talked about in real estate, right? But it can be applied to any business you are in. The people watching us, they are entrepreneurs, they are you know, business people, they are doctors, attorneys, everybody, financial planners. The key thing is, who is your avatar? Who's got your money? Actually, there are a lot of people. If you have the abundance mindset, you will find people. When we start looking for, you know, uh, Teslas in our neighborhood, we find so many Teslas. It's amazing. When we look at so many cars around us, similarly in the money also, I find if the attitude, if we are manifesting, if we are believing there are a lot of Teslas around, there'll be a lot of them. A lot of people around with money, there'll be a lot of them. That's what has been, you know, real key to success in my business is going after people with who have money, who are have the itch, like you said, Walter, right? To invest money to make more money. And if they don't, I educate them third one, you know, so that they can see the tax benefits and how inflation is eating up and everything. Thank you so much for these great nuggets. Really appreciate that. Thank you.